Hey, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this week's episode of uh, Martin's Monday Pedal Playthrough. I'm Martin Cliff. I'm speaking to you from my studio here in Bucharest, Romania. And in this video series, we take a pedal from my collection. Uh, we play through it using a Fender Telecaster and a Gibson Les Paul to give you some sort of traditional bass for what to, um, what to expect from it. We just play around with the tones. It's not a review, it's not a demo, it's kind of somewhere in between or just having fun with a pedal that I've got and don't use too often. So grab yourself a caramel latte or whatever your beverage of choice is, uh, sit down and, and enjoy the episode. Before we go any further, make sure you click that thumbs up icon to say you like the video. Uh, that's really appreciated, it really helps the metrics of the channel. Subscribe if you're not already. We're around about 17, 18% of my viewers are subscribed. It'd be really great to get that higher. Um, yeah, really appreciate you being here. Comment down below if you've got this pedal, if you've tried this pedal, if there's a pedal that you think I've got that maybe you want to see next. Um, I'm going to do my best to work through as many of my pedals as possible over the course of this year, uh, always on these uh, Monday slots. But yeah, let's get right on. <laughs> So what exactly is an elemental overdriver? That's the question that we're going to try and answer today as we look at the Sander Circuitry Surplus, um, which is essentially a two-in-one overdrive uh, with a few tricks up its sleeve. Uh, so even though you might think, oh, it's a seven knob overdrive, that's kind of crazy. Um, what you've actually got, you've got a gain two and a gain one and a level two and a level one. So that enables you to set uh, either um, yeah, two different gain levels uh, on your pedal um, and then switch between them using the left foot switch which is a channel 2 button uh, but let's take that off for now clean sound my pedal board is <laughs> slightly misbehaving <laughs> So on gain one, then I've got the gain about halfway up. With this particular clipping mode, the other things here are a tone control and a response control, um, and then a six-way switch that's typical of Zander pedals, at least this generation of Zander pedals, that switch between different clipping modes. Uh, and with this clipping mode in particular, or at least with the settings that I had, I didn't notice a whole lot of difference with the gain much below about 12 o'clock. <laughs> It cleans up, but it cleans up to the point that it's barely there. Now I'm wondering whether that's something to do with that response knob, so let's look at that whether that's some kind of input impedance control that controls how responsive it is to the guitar's pickups. Yeah, that's really harsh and trebly. So I have to take it past 12 o'clock to work with this particular guitar. Again, really kicks in by the time you get to three o'clock. So 
So I'm thinking, yeah, that must be something to do with setting this pedal for uh, the guitar. Once we switch to the telly, we'll find that out. Uh, this Les Paul has traditional PAF style pickups, the Brandon Wound 1959 clones, so they're not high output at all. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it at that. Tone control works like a tone control. So a good range of options depending on, on the guitar and the kind of tone you're looking for. There. Obviously with having the two level and uh, drive controls uh, you can set up the pedal to be two very similar sounds. Maybe you just want one that's a little bit louder or a little bit gainier than the other or two very different levels. Um, so it could be a boost uh, or something to add extra sustain or something where you actually take the level down on the second channel but raise the gain to give a faster tone. Uh, let's have a play with these uh, different clipping modes. So on number one we're on. <laughs> I'm noticing more clarity on number two. Three is seems to be gainier. subtle differences. Um, I don't know how much of that is even coming through. Uh, let's crank up the gain just so we can hear the full extent of those. So some of them are sounding slightly more open, some of them are sounding slightly more choked. Um, I don't know whether this is just switching between different tube, scry tube screamer models or whatever. It does sound fairly tube screamery, this pedal. Um, possibly not as extreme as, as a you know, proper openness TS9 or whatever, but it has a that kind of tone to it, um, to me at least. I could be completely... Uh, mistaken with that but um, it's there's lots of subtlety in this pedal and you can probably tweak it to, to suit uh, you but there doesn't seem to be as much difference in the settings as uh, there are certainly the others under circuitry pedals that I've featured on this are quite extreme in the different modes um, this seems to be a much more uh, subtle example but it's pretty cool uh, yeah it's just a really good sounding overdrive <laughs> So let's switch over to the tally and hear how it responds to single coils. Again, clean tone. Going straight back to that last setting that we just had.
the response definitely seems to be doing what I thought it did. I've had to turn it a little bit higher to get the same kind of feel out of the pedal compared with the Les Paul, but not a lot, because there's not a lot of difference in output between the two guitars. <laughs> So that was pretty cool with the gain pulled back just a little way and I'm on setting 3 on the um, switch, uh, pull the tone back a little way, uh, gave me a really nice kind of really light kind of break up tone. I guess the way to, um, the other thing to, to check out with this would be to try the old um, tube screamer trick of cranking the level and pulling the gain way down. So let's see what that sounds like. Gain, virtually no difference on the rotary. So this pedal, while very subtle in terms of its control and the tone or range available to it, does definitely fill that kind of core overdrive uh, niche that I think um, Alex Alexander was trying to um, recreate with this. It has a range of tones available uh, to it, very much depends on the guitar you set it up for that, um, depends on the amps you're plugged into, um, but it's got a, yeah, versatile control set and having the two different channels um, is, is really useful um, so you could basically with one pedal you have a clean tone you have a little bit driven tone and a slightly more driven tone it's not quite as useful as being able to stack two overdrives together because that gives you a fourth option uh, but to do it all in one pedal uh, is, is pretty cool so yeah I, I really like this um, and so and it's made in the UK good quality stuff uh, definitely worth checking out. So a big thank you for watching this week's episode of Martin's Monday Pedal Playthrough. Come back next week for more. Um, there's a whole series of videos already in this playlist. Uh, a lot of bass stuff initially, then some TC pedals that I had to do back when I was stuck back in the UK. Um, and now we're kind of going through some of the more interesting stuff. Um, yeah, remember to click the thumbs up icon if you've not done already. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week. Take care.